Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome back to the Maker's Cave. And today we're going to take a crack at a TV repair. Um, a quick note, you the cave is, is a building that we rent. And uh, the other side of the building, there is a recycler. And every once in a while, people get confused and they just drop stuff off of their door to be recycled. So we walk around to the recycler and give it to him. But every once in a while, they drop off neat stuff, mostly like mont or mostly cool to me, are monitors and TVs. Uh, and I take them in and I try to fix them. Well, I usually don't record it, but this one I thought was pretty unique because this is a Samsung TV they dropped off. It's a 40 inch. Uh, and I'm curious, let's see what's wrong with it. I have no idea. So we're gonna power it on and we'll see if there's anything wrong with it to begin with because sometimes they just drop off really good stuff. And if it doesn't work, we're gonna try and fix it. Yeah, let's do that. Now this didn't get dropped off with a power cord, but I went into my bin and I found one. I forget exactly what it's called, but it's a real thin one with the two rounds at both ends. That's why whenever you throw something out and it has a power cord, you really need to make a box and just put it in it because you never know when it's gonna come handy, especially if you're a maker. So let's plug this in and see what happens. And all right. So far so good. At least there's no smoke. Mm -hmm. We have sound. I'm gonna turn this around for a second so I can see it. Initial review right here as we turn it on. This is a small display box. It's basically saying there's no signal going into the TV. And as you can see, it's got some uh, like jail bars or distortion here. What's interesting is up over here, if this is not distorted, just this box right here. So is it everything on the picture screen? Hmm, this is only so big. So I guess the next thing we do is we need to get something that's gonna give us a full size picture on here. Okay, so what I did is over there is my notebook with a video out. Thought I was gonna sneeze. And I've got an HDMI cable here, so I'm gonna plug this into HDMI port one here and see what we get. There we go. Oh, yep. well look at that. Looks like it's had its 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames. Hmm. I'm going to turn this around so I can see it. This looks perfectly fine. Um, the screen doesn't fill. My picture doesn't fill the whole screen. Let's see if I can change that. I extend the display so it's a whole separate monitor now. All right, I'm going to move this down here so I can see what's going on. Okay, there we go. And we'll watch a little Adrian's digital basement here. Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Adrian's digital basement. Okay, so now what we're going to do is maximize the picture. All right. Now I'm sure you guys are losing a little bit of quality because you're, where'd you go? There you are. Because, um, you know, this, you're watching a cam through a cam. All right, and to me, this thing looks perfectly fine. I don't see any problem with this whatsoever. I'm gonna try some of the other HDMI ports because I'm wondering if one of the ports went bad and that's what they had their, they had plugged in. Let's see. I'm gonna go to HDMI 2. All right, we got that warning again. With the uh, distorted box. You know what's interesting? Didn't recognize the second port. I'm do something. Sometimes this adapter I have acts a little funky. So I want to take that out. No. What happens if I put it back into one? Okay, so I took the HDMI cable from the, my uh, Surface Notebook, plugged it HDMI 2. It recognizes, but it will not show anything on the screen. And the other thing I discovered is we don't have a remote for this, so I'm thinking about running out and getting a universal remote. I should have one here anyway for all the TV repairs I do. Um, there is a like a rocker switch under here. And if you go left and right, 
is supposed to be the volume, which does perfectly well. Now, when you go up and down, it is supposed to change the channels, and it is not. And if you push straight up on this button down here, you're supposed to get the setup menu, and you do not. Curious to see if I plug this back in the. Okay, so it immediately recognized the the notebook going back into uh, HDMI one, but we still don't have this button down here still not doing it. So I think we're going to uh, open this up and maybe it's just as simple as a mainboard re uh, replacement. We'll take a look and see what's going on in here. So I'm not going to bore you with that. There's some screws in the back here. I'm simply going to unscrew them, take the back off, and then we'll be back. I have the uh, all the screws out. Now we're just lift this cover off. Now when you lift this cover off, I want to be careful because there's a cable under here for the remote control. For the remote control. For the control pad right here. So I'm just going to take that off. And I've worked on Samsung's before. Right down here's that little pad with the, like a little joystick left right. I'm actually going to take this out of here because I want to hook this back up to here so we can turn the TV on and off and all that stuff. So I'm going to need a small screwdriver for that. Now you take the screw and you throw it away. No, just make sure you don't lose it. <laughs> there we go. There's the remote. Let's get rid of this back. Now, like I said, I've worked on these Samsung TVs before, and they're all basically the same. It's just features and screen size. So here's the main board right here. Uh, it branches off with a cable down here, which is the T-Con board. Uh, and that drives the screen uh, and shows the image. Over here is the power supply board. Now, usually the first thing you start doing is uh, testing this board to see if it's any good when if you don't have a picture, but we ha not only do we have a picture, uh, well, not only does the TV turn on, but we also have a picture. Uh, so there's definitely nothing wrong with um, the power supply. Uh, I am not sus I am not suspecting the TCOM board either because that's basically uh, involves driving the picture, and you've seen it. We we add a nice picture on there. Uh, it's just the, the Second DVI didn't work. Now they get you zoomed in with some detail. What I suspect is the culprit is this board right here, the main board. Uh, here, right, this is the HDMI 1, which we know works because we saw a picture. This is the HDMI 2, it does not work. Also, the control panel rocker switch right here doesn't seem to do what it's supposed to do. This is all screaming that the motherboard is not receiving signals right and not doing things right. Like it's not sensing the HDMI 2 rather up here. It's not sensing the HDMI 2 to switch over. Let's see what else. Everything look I'm looking for anything obvious, like maybe any pop capacitors or things like that. I don't see any. Also, the other th reason I think I suspect the main board is you saw that gray uh, uh, box show up when it first starts on with the on-screen display box, but yet we had a perfectly clear picture of, you know, when I was feeding it from the notebook. So that's telling me, again, that that image, that OCD, OCD, <laughs> that OSD uh, or on-screen uh, display is produced and dri is put out by this board. So again, that's why I'm, I'm just really thinking it's the motherboard. All right, let's go look up and down QRS and see what a, uh, a main board will cost. Now, I can go and get this new, but a lot of times on eBay, you can actually get um, perfectly work, perfectly fine working ones that are used, uh, really inexpensive. So let's go look this up. And I found one on eBay, $25. I want to bring it in. I mean, it's a 40-inch, you know, high-definition TV. I 
certainly willing to spend $25, you know, just on the curiosity alone to see if that fixes it. And um, see if that fixes it. If not, I, I can always, I found tons of these on eBay. I can pick these up for like 5 or $6. So even if I replace the main board and I replace this, I'm only at about 30 bucks, which for a free TV, you know, I'd, this is great. You know, I'll, I'll take that. So we're going to pause this video and wait for that board to come in and then we'll pick up from there several months later yes it's been about three months uh since i ordered the board halloween happened so i didn't get a chance to get back to this but i had the new board here or the new old board and this is a pretty good board the only problem is the rf connector here is a little bent i'm not too worried about that because i doubt very much if i'm going to be using that connector anyway so Let's take the old board out, put the new one in, and see what happens. Unscrewed. Now we're going to take this connector that goes to, looks like the speakers. There we go. Squeeze this. You want to be very careful with this one because it's a very thin ribbon cable. Old board. New board. It's a standoff we need. Like I said, main board's all installed. So let's turn it on and see what happens. Forgot before we turn on we have to install this connector which is for the d-pad because we still don't have a remote so we can control the the screen plug it in and let's see uh, yeah, supposedly power it on This is not going well at all. So as you saw, we had less than what we had before, at least before we had that gray box with those bars. But here's what I want to show you. Here's that RF connector that I said was bent, but I wasn't too concerned about it. But I said, you know what, let me just um, take the cover off and take a look at it. And I said, well, maybe I'll try bending it back. So I tried prying it back. I even went so far as to get some pliers. And I don't know if you can see that, but literally as I try to bend, I'm flexing the whole board. So now what that tells me is that uh, this board took a good hit because if, with pliers, I can't bend this back. Then that pretty much means that, well, how a lot of force had to bend this. So I'm going to contact the guy I bought this from and tell him, hey, you know, even though it's been three months, I want to see what he can do for me. One week later. I was able to replace that bad board. I've got the good board here. Uh, they did swap it. Uh, so we're going to put this in, and then we'll see what happens again. Old new new board, or the new new old board, is in. Now let's plug it in and see what happens. And there we go. That is what was supposed to be showing up before, not those gray lines that we saw. Let's see how the D-pad works. Now we get a menu. The D-pad is working. The D-pad is really sensitive, but we're definitely not getting those gray bars. It was the motherboard like I suspected. I just had to get one in. Um, so let's go back and make sure everything works like the two HDI, HDMI ports. So I'm going to pull out the video player again. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble the whole thing back up because even if the other ports don't work, I'm, I'm not going any farther with this because it'll still work for what I want for Halloween or some TV around here. All right, got the case all screwed in. I got the base assembly on there so it can stand up. And I have uh, Katrina's video going of her Optimus Prime build coming from my notebook 
And again, you know, you're losing a little bit of picture quality because, uh, you know, it's a picture of a picture. But it works completely fine now. Um, this is HDMI 1. The only test we need to do now is to go to HDMI 2. Because remember, that one didn't work on the old board. All right, after some fiddling around because my notebook lost connection to the TV. Uh, um, <laughs> we're in HDMI 2. And it works. So this TV it works just fine. Uh, part of the problem getting the HDMI 2 to work just now was just simply this D-pad down here. It's a little cumbersome. It definitely, it's, it's definitely made to be used with a remote. So I'll run out to Walmart and get like a $10 Universal. So a $10 Universal remote. Uh, I end up paying $15 for the second new board. So that uh, I return the other one. So that's only $25 I'm out. And I have, what is this, a 40 inch? This is a 40 inch TV that is dropped off at my doorstep. $25 later, great little TV for a Halloween project or hanging on a wall or the kids room or whatever. Um, yep, that's it. So, uh, what I did this video is to show you, you know, especially on Samsung's, it's very easy to repair a TV that's gone bad. There's no need to really throw one out. Um, I've shown you the three main components on at least on the Samsung and they're all usually the same just go about you know logically thinking what it could possibly be is it getting power power supply board is it getting video uh, and what kind of video is it getting so it could either be that T-Con board which Samsung has not all TVs have that some have that T-Con board built into the actual um, main board so you pick up a used main board inexpensively on eBay like I did and you've got yourself a TV all right, so now I'm just rambling on again at the end of the video. Um, if you like this video, be sure to hit uh, hit the like button down below. Helps the uh, logistics of, of YouTube and my channel. Uh, that's it for the Begathon. And until next time, until the next thing that we do, um, Steve, thanks for stopping by the Maker's Cave.